everyone, welcome. Today we're gonna to be going over the immune system and the lymphatic system. But first, I just wanna remind you that if you wanna follow along with my study guide, I'll leave the link below. Okay, first before we start the immune system, there are two important vocabulary words that you're going to hear a lot, so you're gonna to need to know them. So an antigen is a protein found on pathogens that acts as an identification. An antigen always triggers an immune response. So let me show you exactly where you find these antigens. Let's just say this is a pathogen. On the surface membrane of the pathogen, you're gonna have these little identification tags, if you will, and these are your antigens. So these, little proteins are your antigens. These, when they enter the body or when a pathogen enters the body, it triggers the immune response because the body says, hey, this antigen does not look familiar. It's not part of the body. This identification is not part of the body. So we need to attack it. In comes the antibodies, a protein made by the body in response to antigens. So an antibody fights the antigens, okay? So just think antigen is on a pathogen. Antibody is made by the body. Body, okay? Okay, so when a pathogen enters the body, generally two things are gonna happen. One, a dendrite cell will eat the pathogen via phagocytosis, okay? Or a macrophage will find the pathogen and it will eat it via phagocytosis. So remember, phagocytosis is the engulfing of foreign material or pathogens and cellular debris. So both the macrophage and dendrite cells can engage in phagocytosis. So this is exactly what happens when a macrophage eats a pathogen. Within the macrophage, there are these lysosomes and the lysosome releases enzymes that surround the pathogen and break it down so that it's no longer harmful. When it does this, some particles or pieces of that, of that pathogen are going to be released. Some of these broken down components are actually the antigen of this pathogen. So the antigen, remember the antigen is right here. This is the antigen, this is the pathogen. So some of the broken down components are the antigen. Now what the macrophage is going to do is it's gonna display this antigen on the surface of itself, like this, okay? So that other cells can look at it, look at the antigen and be like, oh, there's a problem here. This is an invader. This is not supposed to be in the body, okay? Now, because the macrophage displays the antigen on the surface of itself, it's actually gonna be called a antigen presenting cell antigen presenting cell, okay? And it basically lets other cells know, hey, there's a problem here, okay? Look at this antigen. Now on the other side, the dendritic cell also undergoes phagocytosis. It eats the pathogen and it takes its antigen and it presents it on its membrane. So the dendritic cell is also what? a antigen presenting cell, a APC. The difference is that the dendritic cell is going to travel to the lymphatic system. So if you can't tell by my drawing, this is a lymphatic vessel and this is a lymph node. So within the lymphatic node, you're gonna find B cells and T cells. The dendritic cell is going to travel around the lymphatic system and it's going to touch and rub on each B cell and T cell and it's gonna show them the antigen. Now, if the B or T cell recognizes this antigen, 
then it's going to be activated and it's going to create um, or, or clone itself and make more BRT cells and create like a little army to fight against the antigen or pathogen. Okay, so basically dendritic cell, they call it the bridge. They call the dendritic cell a bridge. Oh my gosh, is that a bridge? Okay, a bridge between between innate and adaptive immunity, okay? So I know we haven't gone over innate and adaptive immunity, but you're gonna need this for later. So dendritic cell is the bridge between innate and adaptive. So it basically takes the antigen, it travels from the tissue or from a site of damage and it travels to the lymphatic system and it alerts the B and T cells and says, hey, do you guys recognize this antigen? If you do, then it's invaded our body and then the B and T cell multiply and make an army to fight against that pathogen. So that's what's going on over here. Now let's go back to the macrophage eating the pathogen. A macrophage that displays an antigen is going to attract helper T cells. So these helper T cells have this receptor that kind of locks on to the antigen. And it's going to do two things. One, it's going to learn the shape of the antigen. And then two, it's going to clone itself. So it's gonna make a bunch of other T helper cells. Each of these T helper cells is going to be able to identify this specific antigen. The T helper cells are going to release chemicals called cytokines cytokines and the cytokines basically stimulate other cells to activate now these two cells that activate or that are stimulated by the helper cells are B cells and T cells so B cells and T cells okay so we're gonna take this and I'm gonna move it right up here. So helper T cells are going to release these cytokines and cytokines are going to stimulate B cells and T cells. Specifically, they're going to stimulate the plasma B cells and the cytotoxic T cells. Let's start with plasma B cells and what the B cells do. Plasma B cells produce antibodies. So these are the antibodies. Antibodies are going to surround the pathogen and this basically blocks the pathogen from spreading or from interacting with other cells. In other words, it neutralizes the pathogen. So also it marks it for destruction by the macrophages. When a macrophage comes around and it sees antibodies surrounding the pathogen, it's going to be kind of like a red flag for it and it's gonna be like, oh, okay, this isn't supposed to be here, I can eat it. So it's going to eat up the pathogen. Now there's also memory B cells. Memory B cells are going to remember the antigen and this is gonna help your immune system act faster whenever you uh, encounter the same pathogen again. So let's go over to cytotoxic T cells and what they do. Okay, so here's your cytotoxic T cell and they basically work on cells that are already infected with the pathogen. So here is our cell and it's infected. What the cell does is it also is an antigen presenting cell which means that it gets the antigen and it presents it on the surface of its membrane. And basically this is kind of like it's call for help. Okay, it's calling for help. It's saying I'm infected. So cytotoxic T cells are going to come around. They're gonna see the antigen. And what they're gonna do is they're gonna release perforin. Perforin 
breaks little tiny holes in the infected cell and then it injects a chemical that kills the cell via apoptosis. Apoptosis is programmed cell death, but pretty much it kills the entire cell. So cytotoxic T cells, they release perforin that create holes in the infected cell and they inject a chemical that kills the entire infected cell. So you can see the difference here between plasma B cell and cytotoxic T cell. Plasma B cell has antibodies and it, it works on the pathogen itself, while cytotoxic T cells have no antibodies and instead they have um, like a poison that, that kills the infected cell. So this one's dealing with pathogens, this one's dealing with infected cells already. So just like plasma B cells, T cells also have memory cells. So these are memory T cells. And these are pretty much gonna uh, remember the uh, antigen so that they can act faster next time the infection comes. There's also regulatory T cells. And these suppress or slow down the immune response. So they basically make sure that the cytotoxic T cells don't go into overdrive and just start killing everything. They put a stop to it or they slow it down. So there's plasma B cells that produce antibodies. There's memory B cells that remember the antigen. There's cytotoxic T cells that kill the infected cells. There's memory T cells that remember the antigen. And there's regulatory T cells that suppress or slow down the immune response. Okay, let's take a step to the side and let's learn about the types of immunity and how the plasma B cells and cytotoxic T cells fit into these categories. So we have innate immunity versus adaptive immunity. Innate immunity responds immediately. Now, it's only able to recognize that something is foreign. In other words, it's not from your body. However, it's not able to recognize specific invaders. So it's, it pretty much responds to all pathogens in a general way, in a, in a generic sense. So it also has no memory. Adaptive immunity, in other words, specific, can recognize specific pathogens, and it does have a memory. Adaptive immunity can break into four different types. So it could be naturally passive, naturally active, artificially passive, and artificially active. Natural is basically you either get this from your mom or from the natural environment. Artificially, think of like when you go to the hospital or to the clinic to get this, okay? So naturally acquired, you have passive and active. Active means you actively make the antibodies yourself and passive means antibodies are given to you. So passive, you get it from your mom, either via breast milk or placenta. Um, active, you get this from an infection. So if you, you know, you're out in the environment and you naturally get the common cold or COVID, for example, your body is naturally going to make antibodies to fight this infection. Artificially, remember, you're gonna to go to like a clinical or a hospital to get these. Passively, you're getting preformed antibi antibodies introduced into your body. So this is kind of like medicine or antibiotics. Active is you're getting, you're getting a weak form or inactive form of an antigen and your body is actively making antibiotics to fight it off. So this, for the example, this is a vaccine. So one last thing, your adaptive immune system breaks into a humoral response and a cell mediated. So this is humoral. Humoral response is referring to the plasma B cells and whatever goes on over here. So humoral actually means the fluids in the body. So this takes place in your blood, in your lymph fluid, in your interstitial spaces. This is happening, these antibodies 
are surrounding the pathogen in the fluids of the body. Okay, so this is humoral response. Everything with the with the B cell. Now the the T cell. This is all cell mediated response. So cell mediated response. Everything that has to do with what's going on with the T cells, even the um, even the memory T cells and the regulatory T cells, this is part of cell mediated response. This happens inside the cell. So cytotoxic T cells are targeting inside an infected cell. So humoral happens in the fluids of the body, cell mediated, cell mediated happens inside of the cell. And these two are part of the adaptive immune system. All right, everyone, this pretty much sums up the immune system in a nutshell. If you need a study guide to follow along with that just simplifies everything, I'll leave the link down below to my immune system slash lymphatic system study guide. And thanks so much for being here. Until next time.